Hello everyone, Only Draven here again, and today we're doing another tutorial in Minecraft Sky Factory 4. Uh, today we're going to be doing just a very basic introduction on how to build a fission reactor in nuclear craft. Um, now there is a lot of stuff involved with fission reactors and nuclear craft, um, and I could make hours worth of videos on it, um, but this is just a very basic starter tutorial to get people kind of just going. Uh, something that's been very commonly requested, uh, so I was happy to finally put something together. Uh, if you like this video and you find it helpful, uh, please be sure to click like, uh, but most importantly, please remember to hit that subscribe button. Uh, that way you can see all my videos and tutorials as they come out. All right, so uh, for today's tutorial, uh, we're going to be doing a couple different things. Uh, we're going to need, uh, starting off with some fission reactor casings. Uh, you need a bunch of these, and that's going to be some basic plating, four of those, with a tough alloy in the center. Uh, next, you're going to need a single fission controller, and that is going to be two magnesium diberide solenoids, four advanced platings, a machine chassis, and two nuclear furnace. That's going to give you your controller. Next, we're going to need some reactor cells. Reactor cells are four pieces of glass and four tough alloy. Then we're going to need a cooler. There are a lot of different coolers. I'm going to go over some of those, but I'm going to start with just giving an example of one, which is the lapis cooler, uh, which is an empty cooler and two lapis blocks. And then last, a fission reactor port, which is two of those fission reactor casings we made earlier, two copper solenoids and a piece of glass. All right, so I've kind of got the basic shape already built. Now you can build these in a lot of different sizes. Uh, three by three, five by five, whoop. Well, I guess it would help if I hadn't fallen off there. Three by three, five by five, seven by seven, all the way up 24 by 24. Uh, pretty much as big as you want. Um, the space inside of the reactor is gonna kind of dictate um, how much power it's going to produce. Now an important thing to remember when building the reactor is its overall shape, okay? As you'll notice, the corner edges or corner blocks are not built onto here. That's important. If you have those filled in, like these three or those three, then it's not going to complete. When you click on your controller, you're gonna get a message that says casing incomplete. Now it says that now because obviously I'm missing the wall right here on the front because we wanna look inside. But once I complete that, it'll give me up here the size that I'm looking of this of the reactor that I've built. If you get one that says casing incomplete, either something is missing or there's an extra block. The controller here does not count against that, so it's okay to have it sticking off the edge like this. All right, so inside, we're gonna start with a bunch of our components. We're gonna start with our reactor cells. The reactor cells are really what creates the power, okay? And if you have reactor cells next to each other, that can, for all intents and purposes, let's say I put those three, it will increase the amount of power that those are going to make. So it will like double or triple. So the more next to each other, the more it increases your power. All right, it's also going to increase the amount of heat that your reactor produces. And if you have too much heat, your reactor will melt down. And that's bad, okay, <laughs> clearly. A meltdown reactor is going to ruin everything you've built, and it's going to cause damage uh, to the world around it, okay? So for this one here, I'm just going to put four in like that. Very, very simple. Very easy to do, all right? Now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab ourselves some coolers. Now, as I mentioned, I grabbed lapis coolers, but we're going to go ahead and take a look at the different coolers. Well, it's going to help again if I could spell. So if you look here in the JEI, there are a lot of different coolers. Now. If you go over cooler and you hold shift, it's going to give you specific requirements for that cooler. So let's just start with the lapis one. When I hold over that, it says must touch at least one reactor cell and one reactor casing. So when I put a, in order for this to work, for this cooler to work, it has to be touching at least one reactor cell and one reactor casing, which is the outer edge, okay? So if I was to take this here and I set this one here, it's now touching that reactor cell and that one, as well as the casing on the outer side. I can put in a few of those. 
Now, if I drop one here, it's going to touch the outer casing once I build this final wall. All right. So if we look at some of the other ones, like a redstone cooler, must touch at least at least one reactor cell. Now you see the cooling rate says 90.0. The number is of course the amount that it's going to cool. The bigger the number, the better. And there are a lot of different ones. Some of them can be way more confusing. So um, if we look at this here, a water cooler must touch at least one reactor cell and one moderator block. So what is a moderator block? This is a block that we're, you put in there. For example, we have a graphite block here. So if I was to put a graphite block in between my two reactor cells, it is going to increase the amount of RF power those cells are going to make. But it's also going to really increase the amount of heat that it increases as well. So for that one that we just looked at here, which was the water cooler, must touch one reactor cell or an active moderator block. A water could touch either one of those reactor cells or that block. For the one that I'm building right now, though, I'm not using those. It's just not important for what I'm doing for a very, very basic one. You do not have to fill the entire inside of your reactor for it to work. Okay? In fact, you could do just one single reactor cell. That itself, sitting in there, will make it work. Of course, you're going to have to finish out your overall shape with your casings, and then that reactor port that we were looking at earlier, I'm going to show you that here in a second. So let's get rid of that. And we're going to put up our final wall here. Now I'm going to take this reactor port and I'm going to put it here with this black dot facing outward. Now that's how our power is going to get out of our, our, uh, out of our uh, reactor to power all of the different things we want to build. Now if we look at our controller, you can see that it says 3x3x3 three by three by three fission reactor, which means the outer shell is complete and there's no extra blocks tying it down. It also says that it'll make 240 RF per tick but it will cool 408. That's awesome. Okay. So, of course, you can make a bigger one or you can fill it up with more cells. You can use the graphite blocks. There's a lot of different patterns and designs. It's really just trial and error to find the combination that you want to use. Now, we're going to grab a lever here and we're going to stick that on the side of our controller because that is how we're going to turn our controller on. You'll see the screen just went green. Now, See, that's creating some power here. Let's turn that off real quick. Now I'm going to grab some fuel. This is TBU fuel. This is one of the many different fuels that you can use. So let's just say, for example, we go to our JEI and we do at nuclear craft and we go to page two. You'll see all these different fuels that are available. By clicking on them, you'll see the different components. All right. Now, if you hold shift over one, it'll tell you the base power and the base heat generation that that fuel type is going to make. Any of these fuels are pretty much going to work. They all have different recipes and based on the different materials that you already have, um, you're just going to basically take the one you're going to use and load it right in here. I'm using a TBO, TBU in this situation, but you can use any of these active cells Again, trial and error to find the ones that work best for you. But then when I turn this on, this goes green here, which means let you know it's on. And as you can see, it is creating RF power at 240 RF per tick. Now, my heat would normally be generating here. And if this gets up and hits that top, you're going to have a meltdown. You're going to lose your entire reactor. In this situation, the amount of cooling I have in there is stronger than the amount of RF so you'll notice that it's not going up at all, which is great. Okay. Again, if you increase the amount um, of the, say, the cells, or if you start using your graphite blocks, you may have to use some of the stronger coolers to offset those. So right now it's creating my RF. So there we go. We have a fully operating generator. You can um, automate loading your fuels into here and generating your fuels. That's something you can do very easily. But the last question we have is, how do we get our power out of here? How do we make it work? Well, there's a couple different ways. Um, and both of them are going to start with an energy extraction cable. We drop that on there. That is going to pull our RF out of 
our reactor port. And you can have more than one reactor port, but it's important that the reactor port be in the center area of one of your walls. It can't be along the top or bottom edge. So if it's a 5x5 five five or 7x7, seven seven, you can have a couple on one side, but it can't be on that outer edge or it's not going to work. Now, a couple different things you could do here, just as an example. You could stick yourself an energy battery right on the end of this. And as you can see, the RF is filling up that battery. You can then connect multiple things to the battery if you wanted. Or you can use energy extraction cable and just run cables directly to your different machines. Another great way to do that. But a way that I prefer is, again, energy transfer nodes. We slap an energy transfer node in there. We can then use a GPS marker, load it inside to any battery or other power, like say for that one over there. We got a battery over there, which is currently being run off of my solar array. But if I had a battery over here running to multiple, multiple machines, I could link a GPS marker to that. I could put it inside of this energy transfer node, and it is going to wirelessly transfer the energy from this reactor that I've made, fission reactor, to my batteries powering all of my machines. So again, very simple setup, very easy to use. Um, Again, the outer uh, casing does have to be complete, but you can use reactor doors. If you have a much larger reactor, you can use reactor doors as part of your out, outer shell instead of um, just traditional reactor casings, which will give you a way to go in and out of your reactor should you need to. Maybe you don't fill up all the space at the beginning. You don't have all the ports and coolers you want. You can add onto. You can go really, really big with these things. And the bigger they are, the more stuff you have inside, uh, the more RF it's going to create, but the more risk you have of a meltdown. So it's important to keep an eye on your heat generation and make sure that it is not getting up there, because if it does, you're going to have a bad day. But that is the basics of building a fission reactor in the nuclear craft mod. Um, just a small basic one, but increasing it, and then trial and error on the different coolers, um, will really kind of help you design and build the best reactor for what your needs are going to be. All right. Uh, well, that is going to do it for this one here today. Uh, if you have any questions about this tutorial or any of my tutorials, uh, please be sure to throw those down in the comments, uh, as well as any recommendations or suggestions you have for other tutorials that you'd like to see in Sky Factory 4. Always looking for different ideas. Uh, but that's going to do it on this one. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.